and that's true for all of you guys. There's no one in in this class that I feel is too sucky to start building their network. Okay. I started building my network when I was god awful. Um, I was talking to Wendley about something about just rendering, but I forget exactly what I was thinking when I was like, talking about it. But it's all right. Might have done had something to do with studying. Oh uh, yes, yes, that's right. Thank you. So uh, whenever I would just study something, I would just do something like this. I'll just pop up a shape and then just start to study. I'll just pull up some reference of what, what have you. You know? And just practice. You know what I mean? Like just have like a kind of a one-off render. Does it make sense? Because I think a lot of times people practice on the real deal. And I'm trying to suggest don't practice on the real deal. Practice somewhere else. I hear coyotes howling. Any other questions? Sorry. I wasn't just like in deep thought and thinking of what next another profound thing to say. No other so, questions? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Brave. Um, um, so when I'm starting to render, I find that I have a really hard time controlling my edges, especially with uh, texture brushes. Mm -hmm. I imagine that I've heard a lot of, for most people, I guess, they use the uh, lasso tool to do that or control edges a bit better, but I feel like it's a bit too slow for me or worry that it's a bit too slow. Do you have any suggestions on how you control edges like in like a faster way? Yeah, uh, you're not going to like the answer. In fact, I think you might, you might, you might be able to guess what the answer is. Lasso tool? No, no, it's not a lasso tool. Okay. What do you think the answer might be to get better about your edge control? Uh, practice? <laughs> yeah. And, and this is not a philosophy on edge control. Like, this is just a thing. If you just do a lot, you'll get better at it type of thing. Um, for instance, let me give you an example of what I mean. If... Uh, there was a time where people were asking me, like, what tools are good for this or that? Um, and I always explain, it's just the best, the fastest way to do something is just to do it right. Okay? And if you think about what that means, is like, you know what's faster than drawing a straight line with a ruler? Just drawing a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But that's, yeah. that, well, how do you get there? How do you get really good? at drawing like a perfectly straight line practice yeah. you know there's no there's no philosophy behind it there's no kind of metaphor or strategy it is just the reason why i paint so good is not because i have the secret on how to do edge control it's just because i can just paint really good you know i have the ability to push and pull shapes like i just know that if I do this and do this, that I can get this. And me telling you what I just did and how I did it and showing it to you doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to be able to do it. Make sense? Do you understand? Yeah, sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> okay, but don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. So how do you, what are the things you can do to practice this? Well, obviously, just practice blending, you know? Practice, like, having a, a hard edge thing next to a soft edge thing. Like, how do you make this edge soft without making this edge soft? You get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And uh, a way to do it is to just do 
do it without making that distinction, right? Mm -hmm. Like, see how like my the apex of the brush start there, and I just did it. See, like it just it goes there, and if I end up going on accident, I just have the confidence of cleaning it up with one or two brush strokes. Because usually, what ends up happening is if you do that miscalculation, then you have to do this, and then you have a mess, and then you have to do it again, and then you have a mess, and you know. Yeah. And I can't teach you that is what I'm trying to make clear. That is just fucking practice, okay? Got it. So you, have to, you just got to know. Um, but it is, it is quite obviously possible. And, it's actually, and, and here's some good news. It's one of the easier things to learn. Like motor skill-based things are really easy to learn because all you got to do is just keep practicing them. Make sense? There's no like, like – I think learning design – and like how to make appealing artwork to others is a more challenging thing to do because it rely it, it falls into the realm of subjective thinking, you know. And whenever yeah. you jump into subjective thinking, then it becomes more harder to kind of teach or even guide people on how to do that well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but if I if you wanted to know how to draw straight lines, man, I got I got strats. Just draw straight <laughs> lines all day, <laughs> you know. Just draw straight lines all day. You know, and do that for years, and you'll get really good at drawing straight lines. I promise. Yeah. You know. Got it. Um, it's the same thing with edge control. Like you just got to control your your tool and your edges, and you just got to be consciously figuring it out. And the reason why people use lasso tool, just like the same reason why people use the ruler, is because they can't. It's just they just can't control their edges. And there's nothing wrong with using a, a lasso tool or a ruler. Okay, but if you want to get the fastest way to do things, then you just gotta have a, an absurd amount of control, right? And that just takes a lot of time and effort. Um, that's why, like, when I'm doing this painting, I can, I always challenge that, right? Every time you see me do these demos, a lot of these demos are not so much me showing you guys a technique that you guys can do. It's just more along the lines of me answering questions. And while I'm answering questions, I'm practicing something else. You know. And if you guys ever have a very direct question on how I do something, uh, I will I'll explain it the best I can. So how do you practice getting good at edge control? Like what are the kind of strategies? Uh, yeah, like just try to find ways to not screw up one hard edge to get a soft edge type of stuff. You know, that kind of stuff really helps. Uh, and just doing it a lot. Um, learning how to do a whole painting only with a hard brush. Learning how to do a whole painting only with the airbrush. That's a really good. It gives you a good sense of how to um, control soft edges versus hard edges. Because mm -hmm. right? then you don't have variety. You don't have the opportunity to use a soft brush when you're only using hard brushes to paint the whole thing. And vice versa, you don't have an opportunity to get hard edges because you're only using a soft brush. So how do you get hard edges with a soft brush? Do you know how? No. I do. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, how do you get a soft edge with a hard brush? Do you know how? Uh, opacity? No, you can't do that. You just got to use a hard brush the whole time. Oh, don't know. I do. All right. So, so go figure it out. All right. <laughs> and it's it's really important that you figure it out because when you'll you'll be at everyone's at different levels. And then once you try it, and then you stumble upon a tremendous amounts of mistakes, then your questions will be a little more guided, right? Because then you'll be like, hey, you know, I was trying to do this thing, and then this thing happened, right? And I'll be like, ah, I get it. I remember those days, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, your question's too general. You need to get a little more nuanced for me to be able to give you some really concrete um, criticism. And usually yeah, I can see it in your work. You know, even if you believe, like, I need to know the foundation. I'm like, you know, I think you actually have a good grasp of foundation. Now you need to learn some of the tertiary stuff, right? Mm. Um, but to, to be actually to fair to that statement, that's never true. Foundation is almost always important. And I think in, in, in almost 90% of the cases where I struggle with my own artwork, it's always a foundational flaw. I just didn't eat my art veggies. People don't want to eat their greens, you know? And uh, greens are like the, the best things for you. 
how come the best things for you just don't taste as good as they need to or should, right? <laughs> and uh, it's the same with art. Like, how come painting in things in perfect perspective isn't so fun? <laughs> right? How come, like, learning anatomy isn't so exciting? Right. These are the things that will make you an astounding artist if you master these things. No question. Yeah, because if you don't know shit, you can't paint shit. And uh, I'm really curious to what your solutions are if you want to try to practice the hard brush thing, soft brush. You guys should all try it. It's a really challenging thing. Me and my friends used to do challenges like this, and there was one challenge that we did where we did everything using um, – in fact, that might be a good Discord challenge. Paint everything with uh, – do like five paintings only with a hard brush and do five paintings only with the airbrush and then see what the results are, right? Um, but we used to do challenges like that. We would do challenges where we do a whole painting only using our mouse. Those were fun. Stupid hard. But it's funny, if you do it for long enough, you get start, you start to get a little comfortable with it. Yeah, and when you're doing like the hard brush and airbrush, you can't use smudge, you can't use any other, to, like if that's the only brush you can do, use, you understand? Super powerful training. Hey, someone wrote something. Uh, didn't Roland start out with the mouse? Yeah, that's what I heard. I don't know. I heard that. But I would need more uh, evidence to know if that was for true. I wouldn't doubt it. He was like one of the original, like OG people. I think tablets weren't a thing yet, so that co could quite be true. I have a strong suspicion that he he's actually not a uh, a painter either. I think he uh, is just really good at photo manipulating. I've never seen him paint, and every time uh, I hear people. Uh, talk about him talking. Uh, he always sounds very, um, he sounds like he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I'm not trying to dog on uh, Craig Mullins. Uh, he's a good guy. And he's like one of the legends and someone that I work that I was super inspired by. But uh, it, it might be good to know that he might be a more of a Photoshop guy than anything else. Like for instance, I had a, um, I'll leave this other artist nameless. I had a friend who found out that their favorite artist um, pretty much just found like really good paintings and emulated those same paintings, but just made it them, their own. If that makes sense. And it wasn't like uh, if I found like a painting and then another painting and then another, and I kind of found like, okay, I like the texturing in this painting. I like the, the colors in this painting. And then I like this, whatever. And then just put it all into one big painting. Uh, it was like if I saw a Sart, like a John Sargent painting, and then just instead of giving the guy like a mustache, I shave his mustache and then give him some armor. But it's like the same kind of lighting, same, same kind of setup. If that makes sense. Uh, and one of my my friends found this out about one of their like idols, and it crushed them. And I was like, why? He's like, I thought like this guy was coming up with all these ideas on his own. I didn't realize he was using reference so heavily. It's very similar to when you find out like Rockwell would pretty much just get, he would recreate the scene in real life, take a picture of it and just paint it. Um, and I'd said, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with even with the, the idea that I told you of the other artists. But what I wanted to make clear with this whole uh, Craig Mullins notion is that if you believe that Craig Mullins is this person who paints everything, um, you he I don't think he does. Okay, and I think if you're clear on that, then your your expectations uh, will be a little bit more realistic. 
because there's nothing wrong with that i'm trying to say like like there's plenty of people who don't paint paintings that are my favorite artists who are just the one of the greatest photo manipulators out there you know and there's nothing absolutely wrong with it it's just if you expect everybody to be these master painters uh there's only the there's only quite a few that i think are generally just amazing people who can paint from literally nothing um and a lot of people don't know who they are too like uh, one of my favorites is my old coworker Matthias Verisolt. This guy is a genius, and like uh, I remember one time I was working. Uh, Wing Wei is another one, the guy that I just showed you with all those badass orcs. Like he paints everything, and every so often he'll use some Photoshop, like photos. But no, like I've seen him paint it too, and um, I seen um, my buddy Matthias. Like one day I was sitting at work, and uh it was one of those types of situations where like between my two monitors i can see him he's like right back there like between my two monitors and i was just like looking over to his desk and it looked like he was looking at the screenshot to a movie and i was like why is he watching movie like full on at work like he's not even like trying to hide it like and it's not that you can't watch movies at work either it's usually people would have it on their second monitor but it was like on his main monitor like he wasn't even like painting and I was like, what is he doing? Why is he watching like this, this, this screenshot of a movie? And I looked closer and I saw him painting. Like he's moving his Wacom template, tablet. And I was like, wait, what? oh, is he, do, is he doing like a paint over or something? Like is he painting over like a, a shot? Like they just sent him like a, a plate and he's just like doing some corrections. I was like, I don't know. I, I can get to the bottom of this. So I walked over to his desk. And as I get to his desk, I'm like, what are you doing, man? What are you up to? And he's like, oh, I'm doing this concept for the movie, uh, the World Warcraft movie. And I'm like, concept? I was like, you you painted this? And he's like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, did you, like, use 3D and, like, you did, like, a paint over or something? Or did you get some, like, like... And he's like, no, I didn't use any 3D. I'm like, oh, well, did you get, like, a photo or did they, the matte painter send you, like, kind of a template of what's going on or... He's like, no, this is all from scratch. And I'm like, what in the fuck? Yeah, but this like took you like, you know, seven weeks or something like that. And you're like, well, you've been working on this for months, right? And he's like, no, I just started yesterday. I'm like, oh, okay. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. <laughs> it was amazing. And I, I remember after he, he, he told me that, I was like, all right, all right, all right. Explain to me why you're so damn good. And I remember he sat there and he's like, "Oh yeah, absolutely." And I was like, "Yeah, tell me, talk to me, like, how do you see lighting? Like, what's going on here?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, I see lighting. If you think about it in kelvins, right? You got to think about the heat of the light." And then I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, kelvins? All right, you know what? Well, you just keep painting, bro. I am nowhere near your level. Like, you already lost me. It was like, there's no way." I'm going to be able to retain any real <laughs> practical knowledge from this conversation. Uh, I am not at your level yet. And one day when I am, I will ask you this question again when it's more <laughs> conducive to my actual knowledge. And that, that day has yet to come. It's very similar to like when you get, you were just asking me about edge control, right? Like it's, you're not, don't worry about that. Just practice. And then one day it will become more relevant, the kinds of questions you ask me kind of thing. Was, that's how I felt when I was talking to him about <laughs> like lighting. Like he was clearly on a whole nother level. Okay, and uh, and and there's something to be admired by that, obviously. But again, you know, it's not the best workflow if it takes you longer than like someone that can pop it out in a second, who uses tons of photos and uh, 3D, like Craig Mullins. Yeah, but uh, I, I've I've heard that he's um his his demos are mostly just super super dry and that people get most of, like i had a lot of friends who went to thu they said it's better to just talk to the guy he's like so smart but whenever he's like talking about like his workflow um it just doesn't come across uh very helpful but then when he's just talking about like work and life and becoming an artist He's like the most insightful person ever. So if you ever get a chance to go to a workshop, I would highly recommend you go. Maybe I'm wrong. And then, and if, if he seems like the kind of artist slash teacher that you need to talk to on a personal level to get some really substantial education from. And uh, I, I've, 
I've met many people and I used to be that way. I used to, um, whenever I would teach, like it wasn't very practical. I would just use too many stories and I would never give examples. And then I, I changed that after, obviously after the several years of teaching. But yeah, I know plenty of people who are just, just nowhere near ready to become teachers and they, they tried. And so it seems to me, I, I gotta know, I've never seen him. So I have no idea whether he uses a mouse or not, but if I had to guess, uh, it's a yes. Oh yeah, I heard he traced his paintings too, like Rockwell. And I was like, oh, that seems like a thing. You know, and people get all caught up on that. People get real purist, you know, like, what? You traced everything? Oh, you are not. You are not the man that I thought you were, right? They get real, real intense. And I'm saying don't worry about that stuff. Any other questions? Well, you talk a lot about uh, showing your portfolio to people. Where were some air places that you went to uh, show people? Uh, just events. I'll just show up and just show people my portfolio. And the more uh, professional the event, the easier it is because there's usually like lines or um, uh, some sort of like obvious place you can do that without being like a, a rude dude, you know? Rude dude or rude, rude gal, right? And uh, the way that I would usually do it and the way that I give my the instructions to my students is um, just be a fucking person. <laughs> you know, if someone's like just coming out of the bathroom, you know, and you're like, bro, look at my portfolio. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not reasonable. Okay. Um, and even if it is reasonable, like let's say you're like at a bar and you guys have been talking for a while and you're having a good time, great conversation. It's meaningful, but it never, there's never an obvious opportunity to just show your portfolio. And, it, and it, it doesn't seem like they're not interested in not seeing your work, right? It doesn't seem like they're like, you know, um, trying to avoid that, you know? If, they, if it, basically what I'm trying to say, if you're just having a conversation with somebody and they are completely, you know, great people, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you can just show them your portfolio, right? You got to read it like as it is. And, and, and to be honest, like, if you just make a great connection with that person and you get their contact information in the most honest and earnest way and you you actually made more of a friend than you did a network, uh, that's more valuable than showing somebody your portfolio. You understand? And it, you should understand for obvious reasons why that's true. Because people don't want to just hire people. They want to hire their friends. And if you can make friends with people, uh, that is the greatest tool. Okay? And that's what I usually guide my students to do. Is like, just try to make friends. Don't worry about showing your portfolio as much, you know? And uh, and if you don't get your portfolio reviewed at all, then then you didn't try to show your portfolio to people. I mean, try to show it if you can. But if, you know, the opportunity doesn't seem right to, just don't, don't worry about it. Um, so, for instance, like whenever I go and I'm hitting it off somebody um, and – they're like, hey, do you mind if you like look at my portfolio? And I'm like, yeah, dude. Because usually it's like fine. Like we're having a normal conversation and everything's good. And then I know we're at like an event that kind of makes sense that this would happen. Um, then I would just look at a portfolio. But there's other instances where this will happen where I'm like, you know, I've been friendly with everybody and I'm hanging out. And then someone's like, you know, just jumps right in and says like, hey, can you look at my portfolio? They haven't engaged with me at all at any point. Um, I don't think to myself, man, what a jerk. I just, um, usually don't give them as much as I would to somebody who just was talking to me for like quite a while. And I don't mean like I'm like actively paying attention and keeping score. I'm just saying like, if I, if you came to me without any prompt and say, Hey, can you look at my portfolio? And I was actually on my way to somewhere, like I was going to go to a workshop or I was going to go meet up with a friend or I was going to go 
do something, I would usually tell that person or tell you, I'll be like, yeah, of course. Um, but right now I'm going to see my friend. So if you can find me later, I will look at your portfolio, I promise. And usually why I do this is so that if that person is truly interested in giving me to look at their portfolio, they have to find me again. And if they find me again, that demonstrates that they have some real, you know, ambition for what they want. And I usually look at the portfolio and I, but I don't just like necessarily uh, just look at it just because I, I'm right there. And what I usually do is if I am just standing there and I am not doing anything and people are like clearly like want to show me, then I'll look through everybody's portfolio. But that's how I think I usually just go about things. I don't try to be rude to anybody. I don't try to tell people no uh, right off. I try to have people earn it. And sometimes when I'm in a conversation with somebody for half an hour already, and it was just an earnest conversation and there was, there was no agenda and then they bring it up. I am, even if I had other plans, I'm more likely to want to look at their portfolio right at that moment. Does it make sense? Because like they've kind of earned it without me actually asking them to do anything prior. And I feel like if you can just do that and understand that if you just go to people and get in their good graces more than like just go being an opportunist, uh, people can read that. And like I said, I don't, I've never met anybody that I, actually that's not true. I met like one or two people in my whole career that were genuine opportunists, meaning people that could care less about anybody else other than their own opportunity. Yeah, I can say I've met a few. But that's how like the tens of thousands of people I might have met throughout my whole career. So it's very small. It's, it's very unlikely. Okay, most people are generally cool. And this goes backwards too. Like if you meet an art director that's just a total jerk to you, right? There's no, he like doesn't give you any respect at all. You know, like you're like, hey, you know, do you mind to look at my portfolio? And they're like, no, I'm not going to look at your goddamn portfolio. Like they're just a total jerk off to you. And for no reason at all, you know, like they don't give you any real rational reason why they can't look at it at the moment. Like I said, I usually give a rational explanation. If I'm like literally on my way somewhere, I don't just look at people's portfolios right out of the bat, but I don't necessarily neglect them. I say, yeah, I get it. I used to be in your shoes. So find me later and we'll, I'll, we'll totally do it. And, um, but in some cases people are just so like, they're so um, almighty that they, they put in this persona of like, yeah, if you want me to look at your portfolio, what a joke. Um, no, not everybody was epic, you know? Everybody had to earn their epicness. So don't ever feel like that person genuinely... And you, I think most of you guys can understand that, even without me explaining it to you. But I, I've had some people and some students that experienced that at some level, and they were they were, they were torn because they met their, like one of their favorite artists, and then their favorite artist was totally rude to them. And they weren't sure how to handle that. And I was like, you handle it like if you met somebody that was fucking rude to you. <laughs> you know, you just be like, that's, that's like, you know, look, man, like, I just wanted you to look at my portfolio. There's no reason for you to, to um, go at that level. You know, I really looked up to you. I had a lot of respect for you. And uh, it's dwindling from your response. You know, I don't mean to come at you hard or anything, but this is how I feel. I feel like you didn't necessarily... Um, I don't think that was the best response. You know, if you come back at them rational and compassionate and empathetic, potentially, um, if they come back even harder, then, you know, just say, all right, well, uh, sorry for wasting your time. You know, maybe next time. You know? Just move on. There's no reason to argue and fight with people. Says the guy who fights and argues with people in politics all the time. <laughs> and... And hopefully you understand that you don't want to work with a person who's like that anyway, right? If you meet a person that's just a complete jack off and you just cater, you just pander to their, their, their lowest common denominator needs. And they're like, you know, I like you, I like you kid. And then they hire you and you get to work at that job, but you're underneath the, the instruction of someone that you, you actually genuinely might despise. Uh, trust me, you will not like that job. Even if you're like, well, it's just a job. I want to work for this company. Now, I know people who work from some of the best companies in the industry, and uh, some of them hate one another. And some of them uh, hate their job, even though they're like working at a super epic studio. Trust that. 
you want to work with people you care about. I, I'd rather work at a super small studio with really close friends than at a super large studio uh, with a bunch of strangers. And that's true, actually, with one of my friends. He's experiencing that right now. He's been asking me for advice on that. And my advice is the same to him that it would be for you guys. Work where you want to work. Don't always go for the money. If you're applying for a company, would it be safer bet to draw their characters like Assassin's Creed for, for Honor or go off the style of game or IP? Um, I think yes for both. Uh, again, this is an obvious answer. Sometimes people don't know, so they just are curious. But um, always think about it in the position, Jonathan. Like Think of it from the position of the employer. Okay? Like, if I had to hire somebody, right, and we're working on For Honor, and that person draws, you know, pirates, space pirates, um, I might not want to hire them. Not because they're not good at space pirates. It's just because they have nothing that is to offer for our, our studio. And then if, let's say they do draw, like, medieval characters that look cool, right but they don't look like the kind of stuff that we would have in our game again that might be a deterrent because the the way that someone wants to be brought on is not so that they have to train you again it's so that you would already be ready to go does it make sense like if i were to hire you john like your stuff would already need to be as good as for Honor or for Assassin's Creed or for whatever game that we need you to be working on. If we hired you and you're drawing pixel art style stuff and say, but look, this pixel art stuff, this Jonathan guy's pixel art stuff is really good. And I believe that eventually if we can keep him here, he'll get really good at the for Honor stuff that we're looking for. You know, that's an obviously extreme example, but if you just use like more subtle examples, Right? Like if I'm looking for somebody to hire for For Honor, you know, then, you know, I'm looking at Zizal Chen. I don't know if Zizal Chen would be good enough for what we need. Not because this person's a bad artist, but because these aren't necessarily the kind of aesthetic we're going for. Does it make sense? And this is a little bit, yeah, this is a little bit more nuanced because it is still medieval and it's painted well, but it's not like designed well or not designed well, that's bad wording. It's not, not designed similar to what we are looking for, for For Honor. You know? And that's not a subjective type of thing that you can actually good look at. In fact, one of the best tools a lot of uh, good instructors and teachers, including myself, give out to their students is to pick a project to emulate that they would like to work on because it helps you get closer to that specific job or aim for a company, like their general aesthetic. Again, is a great thing to kind of aim for for your the average quality of your whole portfolio. You understand me? Does that answer your question? All right, great. Great question. Any other questions? No question? Oh. This is hard to ask a question when you're not sure what to ask at times. I'm searching my brain here. <laughs> 
Yeah, don't worry. I get it. I talk a lot. Sometimes I answer questions that you might have had as I was answering another question. So I get it. Yeah, and, and don't make it, I don't want to make it seem like you guys can't ask any kind of question too. If you feel like a question might be stupid, uh, I never um, will assume that. I will make it very clear to you if the solution is obvious and why it's obvious. And then I'll usually give you some sort of clue on how to um, achieve that solution. For instance, you know, uh, about edge controls, right? I explained how that was a simple solution, but then I gave examples of how to improve that, right? And then how I went about improving it. And now it's just up to you kind of thing, right? So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about whether the question might be stupid or not. When I was uh, doing a demo once, at Blizzard actually too, um, someone was, someone asked me, um, like, how do I color pick? Because they said, how do you color pick so fluidly? Like, you just keep picking that color like it's, like, right there. And I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? And I, I went and opened up my color palettes, and I was talking about that. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, as you're painting, like, you just, like, pick a color, and then you paint in that gray. Or you pick a, a white, and you start painting in that white. And I was like, you mean, like, holding down alt? And he's, and I was like, this, you mean? Like, color picking and he's like yeah yeah how did you do that i was like oh yeah you just you just hold down alt and you get to do it like the default photoshop settings are alt so if it doesn't work uh, maybe your photoshop settings need to change or you just need to reset them and he's like oh great thanks and that was the one of the first of many moments where i realized um don't assume that everybody knows what you know type of thing right even the most nuances of photoshop tricks It became very clear to me with my daughter, for instance. I got her for Horizon, or Horizon, for Horizon. No, Horizon, New Dawn, or Zero Dawn, or whatever. Um, and she uh, she likes it, but, like, basic gameplay mechanics. I was getting so frustrated with her yesterday, and I actually had to put myself in check. So why am I getting so frustrated with my, my five-year-old girl who... So clearly never played this video game or video games of this caliber. Cause I don't, I don't believe that she doesn't need to, like I, I put her in challenging things. That I believe that she can do. If she puts some attempts, but I realize it might be too advanced for her. But anywho, um, like there's just like clear UI indicators that were on the screen. And I just was like, you just got to go to that arrow. And she just was like, what arrow? Like she just was always second guessing herself. And uh, it was just, it was infuriating for me because it's so obvious. But then I realized, well, why would that be obvious for her? It's not like she walks around this world and there's like little icon floating in the air, you know? And so then like when we were at the mall today, for instance, she was trying to touch the screen to like move it like an iPad because she uses an iPad here and there. And she, she couldn't because it's just a TV. <laughs> it was just like a, it was like a map of the mall, and she couldn't do anything. And I was like, oh, I explained her like, not all screens are touch screens, right? Yet, because <laughs> she's actually on the right track. I think everything will be touch screens at some some level. But it was interesting. So yeah. So again. Don't think any question is too stupid. Any other? Let's see. At uh, 673, let's see what happens. See if I got a couple more followers. Let's find out. Duh, no one wants to follow me anymore. <sighs> Woe is me. Woe is me. Yeah. 92? 92 views? 
Sick. This makes me curious. I want to... Is there a way to see the analytics? That would be really cool. To see who is scoping my workout, like from what countries or what parts of the world. Oh, yeah. I always pay attention to the amount of love that I get for a specific painting. Uh, I definitely pay attention to that. I, I f encourage everyone to do this because what it does, I call it um, positive criticism. Well, I don't know if it's my thing, but I just call it that. Uh, and it's for the idea around that, you know, when you post artwork, usually people don't critique it, like on Facebook or something like that. Usually people will just either like it or move on with their life. You know, most people won't comment negatively. You know, um, at least in my experience. And what that means then is that you have to gauge based off likes and um, shares, stuff like this, and comments. So the more likes something gets, the more I realize people might be interested in it. And the less likes it gets, um, then most likely people aren't as interested. Like people still like it, sure, but they'll like won't like it like it. If I can get like a, a large impulse of people to just all of a sudden want to like my work, then I may be doing something really good, you know. But if I don't like see that flux of likes, then you know I question whether it's something I should pursue doing. Case in point, if I go to Facebook. If I go here, and I go to photos, and I go to your photos, and then I go to, yeah, these ones right here, I guess. What the, John? Why does, why does they want me to tag John so badly? <laughs> Maybe albums? Yeah, let's go to albums. Okay. Uh, this is great. It makes it easier for me. So if you go, like this image is the latest one I posted, 353. This one, 262. I think it's because I put, it, like, it has a lot of comments, right? 40 comments? It's because I put a political post in there. So there, I usually kind of ignore these ones a little bit because they usually get very low likes but a lot of comments. Uh, sometimes I get a lot of likes on my political posts. See, so like, this one had a... Medical post, so, did, so this one also is kind of, it's hard for me to tell for sure if that one's like um, something that I should pay attention to. Um, but this one is, I think, was normal. Yeah, see, this one's political. This one was regular. This was political. This was just happy Valentine's Day. And this one did really, really well. And I knew this was going to do really, really well. I even anticipated it. But these like more stylized ones, I was actually kind of shocked on how well this one did, right? And but this one didn't do so well, neither did the first one. But this purple thing, this is also political, I think. This one got a lot. Yeah, these there's a lot of these ones that are political. I think that was also political. But yeah, I just pay attention. Like this one, I don't think was political. Yeah. And I knew this one was going to do well because there's two things that I know will do well on my Facebook and Instagram and our station and what have you is if I paint really, really good and if I paint really, really weird. The weirder it is and the, the cooler it is in terms of painting, the better it will do. So I think this one... Yeah, it did well because it was just weird again. Yeah, when I get to like 500s, yeah, I definitely get much love. You know, it's like sculpts that I do. People aren't as interested in my sculpts, but like these bizarre paintings with stories people liked. This one did really well. I think the story and the painting. But look, it's like a, it's like a really weird thing. Like, what's this about? <laughs> you know? 
And this is why this one probably did really well. And so if I really want to push that kind of agenda, uh, I just got to paint the most bizarre stuff. Yeah, see, like this one did really well. But then again, if you look at it, it's pretty bizarre and it's painted really nice. In fact, I don't think I put this one on my art station yet. I like those paintings. I should do more of those. Like this one, we'll probably do okay. We'll probably get like 300, 400 likes in the span of a week or two. And you guys can check it out. I'll post on my Facebook. You guys can check it out for yourself. Because it's somewhat refined, but it's mostly incomplete. Like I said, it has to be nicely painted with some level of quality, and um, it's got to be weird. It's not that weird. It's just kind of your kind of common monster. But it's fun to paint regardless, and I don't necessarily drive a lot of what I do based off of what I think other people want me to do. A lot of what I paint anyways is what I want to paint. And I can intuitively, like, if I really wanted to, like, boost my following, I would do those two things consecutively and consistently. But it doesn't necessarily mean I'm practicing my craft as well. If I just keep painting things that I like to, or things that I know work, it's all it's best to challenge myself so that my overall, my artwork just gets better. And uh, those ones will come every so often. So it's okay. And if I really, really want to boost my following, I add one more variable, fan art. If I pick a John, and I haven't done a fan art in a long time, so I'm thinking about doing some, uh, because I love fan art too. I used to do a lot of it, um, but fan art. And it's, what works for me is that if I did fan art of stuff that I liked and made them weird and painted them well, they usually do really well. All right, I'm going to answer these last two questions. Um, do you ever do more or less types of artwork based on response you get from posting? Oh, I already read that one. A lot of your posts have more whimsical titles like the Lost My Wallet. <laughs> Is that something you're deciding when you're painting or it, or are you just reading the narrative of the finished piece? Yeah, I'm just reading the narrative of the finished piece. And if you go to my Instagram, I do it more on my Instagram than I do on my Facebook. My Facebook is mostly I just write stuff and I'm like talking to people. Uh, and it's because like, Talking back to people on uh, on Facebook is easy, but on Instagram it's not as easy. I don't check my Instagram often, so I, I generally just use Facebook as my main thing. And I'm not on my phone a lot either, um, or at least I'm not on my phone checking my Facebook a lot. Whenever I'm checking my Facebook, I'm usually on my computer. Uh, and when I check Instagram or whatever or, or Facebook, it's usually just in response to just seeing if someone responded back to me. Uh, because Facebook can be a trap, uh, and a, a very elusive trap, where I usually am on my phone, I'm watching YouTube videos or reading articles. I'm usually on my phone a lot in terms of learning more, I'm not necessarily wanting to engage in social debates all the time. Sometimes it happens. Lately, it's happened a lot more than it, I would like. So that's why I've been trying to like take a break a little bit on the political stuff. Um, not because I don't think it's important. I actually think it's very important. But I'm just tired. <laughs> and so, yeah. That's it. And I just uh, been painting right now 144 of my next, my newest batch. It's a lot of paintings, man. I got, um, I've been doing this lately so I can see how many paintings I've been painting. And this is the f only one set in the last two years, I believe. Maybe two and a half. So if you go here and go to old, I have batch A. And then this one goes all the way to 167 paintings or files, at least. Some of them good, some of them pretty bad. And it's the same with the new one. Like, some of them I don't show. But most of them I do. I'm not afraid of showing most of the work I do. But, like, yeah, when I did these uh, Street Fighter fan arts, people lost their mind. They were, like, real stoked on these. So it's been a while. 
And I've been smart enough to put my lift set on them because before I didn't do that. And uh, I had this, some of my old, old fan art got like millions of views through Reddit. Old stuff that I did. And if I would have tagged those, that would have probably brought in some, ow, my ears. Uh, that would have probably brought in a huge, huge group. Let me see if I can. Anthony Jones, Super Mario Brothers. See if I can find. Oh yeah, look, Huffington posted a thing on me. Wow, there's a lot of them. I was on Gizmodo. Yeah, so this got like they usually show you the amount of people that checked it out, but I guess no one cared to do that in this one. Oh yeah, they posted it on the Reddit. Guess this person shared my stuff. Um, there was Gizmodo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This was this is pretty cool, man. I remember uh, I did this one, and I put like a very sad. I'm curious. Oh man, nice. I'm curious to, he didn't put the, oh, there you go. Or she didn't, but she did. So I guess io9 had this and Gizmodo just copy paste it, but check it out. So it said like concept artist not only made this beautiful piece of art as he's done before, which they cited my stuff, which is very nice of them. He also came up with an alternative universe explanation for it. And the full, full image is below. But here is Jones's short story. After donating his heart to save his only son, Jarvis, Jarvis devoted his life to engineering to bring his father back to life, picking up his father's work. He found an alternative power source that could bring him back, preserving his body in deep freeze incubator. Jarvis spent 10 years of his young adult life to engineer a, mechanizing, a mechanized suit using the power of steam to breathe life to his father introducing gentleman stark and this is the concept art that i did for that so people you know people clearly liked it they liked the the narrative they liked that this is something that they're they can recognize you know iron man and uh, that i wrote a little bit of like a narrative and i i kind of put alternative spin in there like uh tony stark died and then Jar uh, jarvis spent some time bringing his dad back to life and people thought that was cool so stuff like this uh, is really nice to do as well know what i mean but here's the thing guys i love iron man <laughs> and i love like this type of paintings you know and so uh, when I do this type of stuff, it's not because I'm like looking to get clicks and likes and followers. I do it because I like to do it. And so, you know, as a consequence of that, I get tons and tons of followers or tons of recognition. And I think that's the best way to go about it. I don't think you should be like, oh, I did fan art AJ and it didn't work out. It's like, that's not the way you should look at it. You should do it because you, the, it's in the name, right? You're a fan of the thing. You're not doing it for any other reason that because you're just a fan of it and uh and i think if you do that from that point of view you're you do a better job and and if you do it that way too then you're not driven by some sort of alternative motive which i've seen a lot of people have got stuck into and now like that's their kind of their job is to do fan art and they're not necessarily enjoying it and they they even kind of complain to the fact is like why doesn't anyone like my original content well it's because you didn't build a following around your original content does all of this make sense to you guys? I have built a following around my original content. And every time I do fan art, it gets people to find my original co uh, content. And they, they, they usually stick around. All this makes sense, right? The quality of life, guys, will be much higher if you focus in on these types of ideals. Okay, so here's the, 
the one that I was talking about. So these are like things I did. So this was posted in 2012, but I did these like in 2008 or 2009. Like these are like really, really old. And like, so, so someone found it just like out of nowhere and they're like, whoa. And then they posted it on, uh, on Reddit. And then if you look, it's almost got 6 million views. And there's like no no clue who worked on these. It's just cool artwork. <laughs> yeah, these are mine, man. These are my original. And this, these were all designed off of these ideas of like Mario and like, like this dark noir setting. For instance, uh, this is Princess Peach, but she was uh, that's her stripper name. She was a stripper. And then Told was uh, is a drug dealer. He sells flower power. And if you're lucky, he'll sell you some extra shrooms. All right? Uh, Bowser is like the mob boss. He's like he's the one that's in charge of all the the, the crime and crookedness in in the world of Mario. And then what Wario is basically, you know, a plumber, a uh, rival to Mario. But he also is like a, you know, he works for Bowser. And then uh, Mario is just our, our protagonist. He's the hero. And he's just trying to make a living. You know, he's just trying to do, just trying to live his life. And then he had to fall into the life of crime. But he's fighting against it. And then uh, his his uh, younger brother, Luigi, is a drug addict. And he dies in a tragic, you know, overdose. And that's what brings Mario into the fray of killing Bowser and Mario, the people that are involved was giving him drugs drugs in the first place. Trying to clean the streets of the streets of the Mushroom Kingdom, y'all. And people like the narrative and they're like real into it. You know, uh Fifty Shades of of Grey was originally a Twilight fan fiction version of uh, or a fan fiction version of a version of the Twilight series. It was the idea of what if Edward and Belle Bella were like just had this like dominatrix like <laughs> romance they're just like super aggressive and violent but obviously you know the, the original twilight writer couldn't do that because their story was more driven to younger girls teenage girls so they can't go too hardcore right and so this this fan was like what if they did though you know what's the art version and she wrote that and people were like were in love with it and she was just like wow this is something and they're like well we can't obviously just make a Twilight <laughs> spin-off. And the original writer hated it or hated the idea that this was happening. So they basically just rewrote the whole story by just changing the names and the characters and the settings. So instead of, um, you know, uh, Edward is, you know, Mr. Gray. And instead of him being a vampire, he's just a multi-billionaire or something like that. So he still had that power, right? It's just stuff like that. And then that same audience knew that that was the case, and that's why that, that film did so well. And the book and film did so well. So th there's something there, okay, to fan art, and it's a good entry way to uh, good recognition and concept art. But I would highly recommend it if this is something that you want to build a career around, then it's totally viable. But if it's something that you want to help you build your uh, reputation, then do it in a way where you're not doing constantly because uh, it might become something of a trap. But if you do enough fan art or something, you might actually get to work on the actual projects too. Like my good old bike buddy Mike. My buddy Mike uh, did like tons and tons of Riot fan art and then eventually they just reached out to him and said, you want to do Riot, actual Riot splash screens? You know? So that's my advice to you guys. Hope it's useful. All right, guys. I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for coming in on Saturday. Appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. And, uh, yeah, you guys have a good one. Work hard. Hang out with each other, one another in the discords and uh, in the Skype chat. You know, give each other feedback, help each other out. Really remember, community is large. We talked about networking in the beginning. I'm telling you, 
make friends. Don't make, don't just network, make friends with people. I have countless amounts of people that I know, but they're my friends, people I care about. And this is why I succeed in this industry. And there's no reason why you guys can't either. And by the way, I'm your friend. So you already made one good connection in the industry. So <laughs> good job. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.